<clears throat> Chapter 4 The chill and the dark seeped over me. The wooden floorboards creaked under my feet. Oh lord, this place was creepy. It made no sense for it to be colder in here than on the outside. That's right, I told myself. Focus on the logic. I should have run out of there screaming. Instead, I took one more step, then another, till I was all the way inside. The thin beam from my flashlight reached tentatively into the blackness. I could barely see two feet in any direction. I had no idea what surrounded me or which way I should go. I shuddered to think what might lurk just beyond my reach. The whisper of a breeze stole over me and I jerked in surprise. It was coming from inside the house. I sucked in a breath, calmed down, and I told myself, I sucked in a breath, calmed down. I told myself I wasn't some stupid horror movie heroine going into a dangerous situation for no reason. I was merely taking a gander inside a haunted house in order to help an old, old widow and save what should have been rightfully mine in the first place. This wasn't the same thing at all. Plus, I could run like the Dickens. I fought to keep my breathing slow and even to ignore the pounding of my heart. There were no axe murderers here, nothing alive. My bangs tickled against my forehead, stirred by an imperceptible force. Frankie, I asked my voice catching my throat, please tell me that's you. I wouldn't even be mad. It's not, he said quietly. He hovered on my right, behind my line of vision. I could feel him next to me. <clears throat> At least I hoped that was him. For once, he kept his voice down. <clears throat> There's something in here that you can't see. Sweet mother. What is it? I froze in place, as if that would keep anything from coming at me. Tell me where to go. I get the money and break a land speed record getting out of here. A chill tickled up my spine. Frankie, my voice quivered, tell me what's going on. Head casual, he disappeared. Oh, no, he did not just do that. Something was wrong. If I couldn't see what threat might be lurking and if Frankie wasn't going to tell me, then I was in a lot of trouble. If you're not going to help me, I'm leaving. Now. Or at least as soon as I could find the door. I took one step backward, then another, inching my way toward a full retreat. Wait, Frankie snapped. Stop, fine, I'll do it. What? I braced myself. His voice spoke from the dark board to my right. I'll make it so you can see the ghostly side of this place just this once. I couldn't spend another second in the dark, so I nodded and found my voice. Please, I said. <clears throat> if I do it, you'll stay. You'll help me find the cash. I'll try. My skin prickled as I felt the air around me shift. Frankie? I asked, not trusting my own voice as the ghost of the gangster shimmered into view next to me. A, du a dull light settled over us, casting the house in an eerie glow. <clears throat> I stood in a single room. Gossamer cobwebs hung down from the ceiling like Spanish moss dripping from an age-old oak. <laughs> The ends brushed over my forehead and tangled in my hair. Yikes. I ducked and my breath hitched as a wire shadow. Scrambled down the far right wall and I burrowed into the corner by the floor. <laughs> oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. I repeated like a mantra. mantra. <laughs> if I could hold back the faint images. That <laughs> slowly came into focus all around me. They intensified and formed a ghostly portrait of a life once lived. Fire crackled in the stone hearth. <laughs> I could actually hear the wood snap. <laughs> a three prong pot sat floated above stand three prong prong pot stand floated above it with something thick bubbling inside. To my right sat bronzers off the ground over the table, surrounded by rough wood chairs. Took a quick step forward when a delicate spinning wheel appeared almost behind me on the left, close enough to touch. Loud creaks echo from above, underneath, all around, as if the house was adjusting itself on its foundation. Frankie faded in and out with the rest of my otherworldly surroundings. You doing okay? No, I said truthfully. Ask a silly question. Why is everything floating? Frankie said his jaw. That's just the way dominant ghosts see it. I mean, that's how the dominant ghost sees it. Josephine, I asked, not really wanting to know. Yes, he lowered his chin. Now for that problem I was telling you about, it's behind us. I heard a snarl and whirled to see the shimmery outline of a hound dog with bare teeth. I took a quick step back. 
Pinky hissed out of breath. I never did too good with the guard dogs. The dog's yellow eyes pierced the darkness as it solidified. <clears throat> it took a menacing step toward me, growling deep in its throat. And now that I can see it, it's going to come after me, I concluded. Sorry about that, Frankie said. Why'd I? The beast stalked me toward the back stairs. Step by step, I retreated away from my only means of escape. I grabbed the... I grabbed hold of the banister with a quick prayer that the old staircase could support my weight. The curved wooden handrail felt freezing cold to the touch. I yanked my hand back. A new plan. I wasn't going to touch anything in this place. Except for the hidden money box. And I bitch well echoed from the floor above. I gasped. Gasped. Tilted Josephine. <laughs> it had to be. Frankie appeared on the staircase a few steps up from me. Let's do this fast. He better know what he was talking about. We took the steps two at a time. Each footfall elicited a creak that seemed to echo throughout the house. What do I do if she's up here? I asked, breathless, <laughs> glancing back over my shoulder. <laughs> the hound dog had stopped at the bottom of the stairs. His yellow eyes glowing in the darkness. <laughs> Maybe we can't go any farther. I broke it all. Frankie lurched to a halt next to me. I stopped as well. <laughs> Ghostly portraits on the wall. The quivering beam of my flashlight. Caught the elaborately framed paintings of men with stiff collars and <clears throat> landies with artfully styled hair. Oh, I mean ladies. <laughs> <clears throat> I didn't like this, and I was real unhappy when the exit was blocked. I didn't take well to being trapped by a ghost dog or by anybody. Felt colder up here, sinister. The gangster looked as agitated as I felt and focused on the money. He ordered with the kind of single-minded determination that had probably gotten him killed. Fine, okay. I took one more step, then another. Where is it? I asked as we neared the top. He stopped cold, refusing to look at me. I don't know. What? It came out louder than I planned, but holy moly, he let me here thinking all I had to do was sneak onto this poor woman's land, <laughs> break into a haunted house, uncover the money, and run. And then share it, of course, but in no way did Frankie ever mention that he didn't know exactly where to look. Relax, he snapped. The dog made our decision for us. We'll start by searching the second floor. If it's not there, we'll look on the bottom floor. Money goes away. Since when do guard dogs go away? I demanded, you are the worst criminal ever. He was making this up as he went and taking me along for the ride. Think I've been doing this longer than you? <clears throat> he shot back. Over my whisper, desperate, admittedly repetitive chorus of, oh my goshes. He stared me down. No doubt if he could have shaken me, he would have. Get a grip, sweet. Get a grip, sweetheart. <laughs> Remember, you can move things and touch things in the physical dimension. You've got a huge advantage. That lot of good it would do me if we didn't know where the box was. Oh, sweet mother, I guess. Just we heard the door downstairs, downstairs swing open. Is somebody coming? Someone alive? I must hope we get caught at this point and rescue. <laughs> the ghost dog barked happily and <laughs> went out to greet our visitor. <laughs> Frankie cursed under his breath. It's probably someone who haunts this place. Oh, Jesus. So it's funny or not to get the master. <laughs> Go, Frankie said. You look around upstairs. I'll try to buy some time. If I yell, you run. Lovely rum wear, I muttered, as the image of Frankie disappeared. <clears throat> the dog's barks grew harsh and aggressive as I heard Frankie's voice downstairs. Whatever he was saying, it sounded charming. Whatever passed for charming among the cocky gangster ghosts said, <laughs> I hoped he knew what he was doing. I took the last few steps at a run. At the top of the landing, the ghostly cobwebs tangled all the way down to the floor, blocking my path. There was no way around them. I'd have to go through them. It seemed like an impossible task. And then again, everyone around these parts knew if you want something done, come hell or high water, you leave it to a southern girl. I gripped my flashlight and summoned up my courage. I love my house. I reminded myself on a whisper before squeezing my eyes shut tight. I steeled my courage, made sure my mouth was closed firm, 
It's a forward. I love my house. <laughs> I held my breath and reached out my hands. They tangled in the cold, filmy, sticky other world of web. I love my house. I pressed forward as it touched my face and wound through my hair. I love my house. <laughs> I screamed it in my head as the fibers caressed <laughs> my arms and goosebumps rippled, rippled over my skin. That web <laughs> felt like a living, breathing entity. <laughs> And stretched out <laughs> in front of me, <laughs> surrounding me, <laughs> blocking my way until <laughs> the salt whoosh <laughs> broke through. I ducked my head, sucking in a harsh breath. Get off, I said, furiously rubbing on my arms and face. <clears throat>